Hi everybody. Well, you've learned where your water comes from when you have a bath or a shower, or use the sprinkler, or the dishwasher, or the clothes washer, or just have a glass of water from the tap. It comes from the Souk Reservoir up in the hills just northwest of us. During the average winter, 439 million litres of water are sent down pipes every day for use in Greater Victoria. In the summer, twice as much is sent down. Most of this additional water is used outdoors to keep gardens green and cars clean. But the water doesn't come straight down the pipes to us. A lot of things happen between the reservoir and our taps. At the south end of the reservoir is the intake tower. Here, water enters the drinking water system. It passes through some screens and is then sent downhill through some pipes. Below, you can see a bridge and mounted on either side of it are two pipes that take the water downhill to the Japan Gulch treatment plant where most of the water in the system is disinfected. Down the road from the bridge is what's called the head tank. Inside the building, valves control the water going downstream so that when you turn on your tap, you won't have an unexpected rush of water or just a tiny trickle. Pipes from here are directed into the Kapoor tunnel which takes the water to the treatment plant. Here is the tunnel during its annual maintenance. As we proceed downstream, we come to the Japan Gulch treatment plant. The CRD Water Services Department operates two treatment plants, this one and a smaller plant, the Souk River Road Disinfection Facility. It treats the water for Souk and East Souk. The bigger building that you see is where the water is treated by UV light. It disarms most of the microorganisms in the water, primarily parasites and bacteria. The other building is the chloramine treatment center, where chlorine and then ammonia are added to the water as it flows through. The treated water meets Canadian federal and provincial standards, and also those of the American Environmental Protection Agency. Many aspects of the water supply system are monitored and controlled from a control room located in the UV plant. Operators can track what's happening in the water supply system. This graph shows the daily cyclical use of water over several days. This shows the UV plant and what UV lamp units are operating. All these reactors, they don't all run at once. You can see the ones that are running are green. They turn off and on automatically as needed. The first step in the water treatment process is disinfection using ultraviolet light. The UV inactivates parasites such as Giardia and Cryptosporidium and reduces the bacteria in the water. Each of these UV units is called a reactor. There are 17 of them. Each UV unit has eight UV bulbs, which must be changed from time to time when they lose their intensity. These lights are worth over $1,000 each, so they are handled with a lot of care. There are many meters in the reactor room that allow the operators to check a wide variety of things, such as bulb intensity, water flow, turbidity of the water, that is, how murky it is, and a whole lot more. Now we're in the other building where chlorine and ammonia are added to the water to inactivate harmful bacteria and viruses. These chemicals are stored as pressurized gas and must be closely monitored. Chlorine is the first chemical added into the water. The water comes into the building through these large blue pipes. It has already been treated by the UV units. The free chlorine dispersed into the water inactivates any remaining bacteria and viruses. The final step in this process is the addition of ammonia. Downstream, ammonia is added. It combines with the chlorine to form chloramines. The chloramines left in the water continue to protect it from bacterial contamination as it travels through the pipes to our taps. There are residual chloramines in the water when it reaches your home, but it's perfectly safe to drink. The amounts are well within drinking water guidelines. There are a total of 13 municipalities and three electoral areas that receive this water. Here are some of the water mains that take water into your community. They attach to service lines that bring water right to your home. As you found out, the Capital Regional District Water Services Department is pretty intent on making sure our water is safe and clean. They use what's called a multi-barrier system. For example, the watersheds are off-limits to the public. 
That means no hunting, fishing, hiking, or swimming. Trees are planted along the banks of the reservoir to reduce erosion. Floating barriers stop floating debris from entering the intake tower. Water quality is checked at various locations throughout the reservoir. This boy indicates one place where they test the water at various depths every week. Water samples are also checked after the water has gone through ultraviolet disinfection, and then again after chlorine and ammonia have been added. Every day, they also take water samples throughout the distribution system as water gets closer to your home. They do thousands of tests. We monitor a number of sampling points there and collect samples year-round for about 300 different parameters, you know, depending upon what is required for that particular time. The types of parameters that we monitor are things like bacteria, parasites, metals, uh, pesticides, organics, and things like taste and odor or the, the cloudiness of the water. So we want to ensure that the water is not only uh, pleasing to drink, but it meets the regulatory guidelines. The main function of the CRD Water Services Laboratory is to check for bacteria. Maria Roxborough, the lab manager, is capturing potential bacteria from a water sample on a very fine paper filter. She then puts the filter on agar media in a petri dish. This gelatin media has nutrients that will feed any bacteria that might be on the paper. Containers of many samples are put in the incubator for 24 hours at a temperature very close to that of the human digestive system. If there is a bacterium on the filter, it will then divide, multiply, and grow into colonies. Each container is examined the next day. Lab technician Terry Manzo is checking raw water samples from the Souk Reservoir and counting bacterial colonies. She's looking for typical total coliform colonies. Now the media we're using, the colonies that are total coliforms, would be a pinkish to salmon colored colony. If there were any E. coli, they would be a blue colony. The lab also uses another, newer technology to check coliform counts. 100 milliliter samples of water are put into 51 cells with a nutrient substrate, which is sealed, then incubated overnight. Any coliform bacteria present will cause a yellow color reaction. Here you see three samples. The one that has many yellow cells is a sample of raw water from Souk Reservoir. The one with only a few yellow cells is water that has undergone UV disinfection. The totally clear sample is water that has had the UV process and the addition of chlorine and ammonia. And here's the raw Daily, the turbidity or cloudiness of the water is measured too to find out if there are too many particles in the water. There's a light beam that goes through the sample and if there are no particles in the sample that light beam would go directly through without being scattered. If there's any particles in the way of course the light beam gets scattered and what you're measuring is the scatter of light through the sample. So you want the number to be under one NTU just to measure um, because if it's over one then that means that perhaps some of the bacteria that are present in the raw water when they, when they go through the UV and the disinfection wouldn't properly be killed because they're hiding in the dirt particles. So that's why turbidity is important. The taste and odor of the water is tested every day too. On occasion it might have a slight fishy smell. It's usually caused by a bloom of algae in the heat of summer. It's not a safety issue, but customers often phone in concerned, and they can be reassured that CRD water is safe to drink. I don't know about you, but now that I understand how my water gets to my tap, I'm convinced that the water from Greater Victoria is some of the best in the world. Well, I'm out of here. Ciao for now. But remember, be the difference. Conserve water.